is four o'clock. I will call the City Plan Commission meeting to order. Um, roll call, Mayor Sorensen is here. Older Person Mitchell. Here. Ryan Sazma. Here. Jerry Jones. Here. Mary Lamont Mayor. Here. Dave Hoffman. Here. All right, for those that are able and in attendance, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Is there a motion to approve the minutes from our previous meeting? Second. All right. Slow down there, everyone. Multiple motions, multiple seconds from that side of the wing. So um, any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. Aye. Any opposition? Minutes are approved. All right. And if next, we have an application for conditional use with exceptions by Brian Kurtz to install a new mural on the east wall of the flooring studio located at 1526 Indiana Avenue. Steve, take it away. All right, thanks, Mayor. Zach Worth is here, who is the artist in this particular matter. And what we're taking a look is the flooring studio at 1526 Indiana Avenue. Uh, Mr. Worth is taking a look at installing a 300 square foot, 12 by 25 mural on the east side of the flooring studio. Um, Mr. Worth states that over the years he's uh, thought about painting something large scale outside in the city and there, because there's a lot of forgotten wall space. Uh, he's been driving past this site on Indiana for some time and uh, decided to approach the owner of the property named Brian Kurtz. Brian was willing to work with Stat, uh, Zach to allow him to propose the mural. Um, what we're taking a look at is uh, Let's see, the, um, the parking lot is on the east side, so this is the east wall, so as you would be driving west on Indiana, you would be facing the mural. Um, the I'll let the uh, applicant talk a little bit about the design. Uh, basically what he's talking about doing is once it reaches about 50 degrees in about April or May, uh, he's looking to uh, get out there and they would first uh, trace the design on the wall and then after a few days, the weather permitted, they would be filling the space in with the uh, lines that you see there with uh, black exterior paint. Um, and that's more of the drawing. The blue was just in there. To, it was dark at night. And it was to show you, everyone, hey, this is the location where it's going. So it would be black on that green sage. Um, the mural design is decorative, a symmetrical pattern with fractal leanings. The wall was painted the color sage the previous summer, and the painting design will be black. Um, it's up to the viewer to interpret a meeting that may resonate with them. My hope is that the mural will con contribute to beauty, curiosity, and peace to our community, and also to our visitors, drawing folks to all areas of the city. Um, staff, as with all of these uh, murals, wants the plan commission to consider a couple of things. Um, may want to ask the applicant a little bit in terms of the preparation work of the wall for such, you know, is there any need for sandblasting, priming? Is the applicant using professional paint for the murals? And how will the flooring studio maintain the integrity of the piece in years to come? When the plan commission's considering murals, what we've uh, tried to do for criteria is to decide is the location appropriate? Is the size and scale appropriate? Is the mural considered public art? and not used for any type of advertising? Does the mural represent the city's values, culture, and people? Does the mural activate and enhance the private public space? And are the colors complementary and harmonious with the exterior of the building structure as well as consistent with the theme? So staff was recommending approval of the project and Mr. Worth is here. All right. Does the ap applicant have anything else to add? No, not really. I mean, if you have any questions for me, I'm glad to ask. Cool, questions from commissioners, Jerry? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, one of the main questions I have is about ongoing upkeep. Who, who will be in charge of making sure that it's kept up? You It'll know? be me. It'll okay. be Autumn Pocket, my baby. <laughs> okay, and what yep. kind of materials are we using as We're far using, as paint? Um, exterior paint. Um, I talked with the manager of Sherman Williams. They're donating everything I need to use, and they assured me that it'll be long lasting so, and of quality. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Steve? One of the conditions that you do have um, as far as condition approval is talking about 
the proper maintenance of the mural. And so condition number five just basically says applicants shall properly maintain the mural and any issues of disrepair shall be addressed immediately. If for whatever reason the mural falls in disrepair, the building owner will be notified in writing and required to make the necessary repairs within 60 days. If the repairs are not made within that specified time, city reserves the right to repair or remove the mural at the owner's expense. Any thoughts? No? Okay. Additional comments, questions, motions, comments, anything? I'd make a motion to approve subject to staff recommendations. Second. Motion second, final deliberations. Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. Aye. Any opposition? That item is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Next, item number seven, application for conditional use permits with exceptions by Old World Creamery to construct a new building Additions and offsite parking lot at 1606 Erie Avenue, personal number 5928125060. Steve? Thanks, Mayor. Uh, Steve Knaus is here from Old World Creamery. David O'Brien from Bayland Builders, the constr uh, contractor, and Craig Rush from Wagner Excavating. And there are some neighbors here as well for this matter. Um, so, what we're taking a look at today is Old World Creamery is proposing to construct a new addition in off-street parking at 1606 Erie Avenue and par the parcel that was referred to. Um, the applicant states that there are five building additions proposed for this project, one new off-site parking lot, and the re relocation of a truck scale. I'll just go through a couple of the uh, different building additions, but Steve tends to be able to explain what they are much better than I can. Um, the first building addition is between the existing brick building, the original building, and the brick block intake building. The addition is called the wastewater building addition, and the addition roof area is approximately 2,050 square feet. Next, the second building addition is called the intake building addition, and it's located on the east side of the existing intake building. This is also next to the north to the wastewater infill building addition. Semi-tractors and tanker trailers are backed into the intake building to unload. Four additional feet will be added to the building to allow for an overhead garage door to close when the trailer is attached to the tractor. Currently, the trailer needs to be disconnected from the tractor during the unloading process so the overhead door can be closed. The front of this building addition will line up with the wastewater infill building addition. The third building is called the production building addition, and this is the largest one at the uh, northeast corner of the site. Um, the location of the proposed addition is in the area of the old and unused loading dock. The area is concrete and asphalt surfaces, and the addition is approximately 11,340 square feet. There are two required emergency exit doors. One is located on the north side of the addition along St. Clair, and the second is located on the east side of the addition along North 16th Street. The fourth building addition is called the silo building addition, and this will connect the existing silo building to the proposed production building, and this is a small roof area extension of approximately 73 square feet. The fifth building addition is called the infill building, and is located to the south of the production addition, which will be used for the storage of products and consist of approximately 3,375 square feet. The parking lot, um, the employee count on the largest work shift is 18. With the building additions, there's the anticipated additional employment of five people for a total of 23 employees. A minimum of 23 spaces is required because uh, the minimum parking is one employee per the largest work shift. The existing parking lot located on site at the northwest corner of the project allows for 18 spaces. There is a vacant residential lot where a house was recently raised to the northeast of the Old World Creamery site. It's located at the southeast corner of North 16th and St. Clair. And this lot is proposed to be uh, used for additional parking. Entrance to the off-site parking lot is from North 16th, similar to the raised house uh, drive entrance. And the surface will be asphalt pavement with concrete drives and the proposed lot will provide approximately eight parking spaces. 
One handicapped parking space will be relocated to the west of the entrance to the retail shop along Erie Avenue. So this provides a total of 27 on-site and off-site uh, parking spaces. So it's meeting that minimum 23 parking required. The existing truck scale ro relocation with the proposed production building addition, the existing truck scale located at the northeast corner of the parcel will have to be relocated north of the production building. The scale allows the tractor and the tanker trailer it, the tanker trailer to be weighed. The entrance approach is concrete and is along North 16th Street. Um, the applicant is uh, requ uh, requesting several exceptions for the building scale and parking lot. And based on those requests, staff will be including a condition of approval that requires the applicant to reinstall curb gutter sidewalk within the North, Teen, the North 16th right away. So that's that section just to the um, east of the new building addition that will be infilled with curb gutter and uh, back to a, a city street specification. The applicant discusses reconstructing the truck scale due to the proposed additions. And it appears that a portion of that will be in the uh, St. Clair, or I'm sorry, the North 16th right away. So the applicant will be submitting what's referred to as an encroachment permit to utilize a portion of that uh, right away for that purpose. So we'll likely see that at a later date. Um, applicant is installing a six foot tall fence to screen the house located at 1529 St. Clair Avenue from the off street parking lot. So there's presently a, a, a fence there now. And the idea is to extend it um, along that uh, parking lot, so uh, it protects the house from the new parking lot. Old World Creamery is somewhat limited in terms of land and appears to be adding structures where space allows and where the additions function well with their internal production. Applicant may, or the plan commission may want to uh, have the applicant address the approximate time frame for the project. And does uh, Old World Creamery have plans for any potential structures or improvements in the future? There are several exceptions that are requested. This will be interesting if you wouldn't mind pointing these out. Uh, the production building addition is proposed to be 10 feet to the east, uh, no, to the North 16th Street property line, and six feet for the required emergency door. Yep, yep, that's it right there. Uh, the proposed building addition will be 21 feet to St. Clair Avenue, and the 16th for the required emergency door. The intake building addition is to be 14 feet to North 16th Street, the wastewater addition will also be 14 feet to North uh, 16th Street. The truck scale will have a zero foot uh, paving setback to the property line and that's why they're asking for the encroachment. The on-site parking lot uh, pavement setback of uh, five feet to St. Clair Avenue and to North 16th Street. So uh, the, it's five feet to that off street parking lot to the property lines, yep, on 16th and, and 5th. And requesting a, a landscape ratio and some uh, buff, uh, landscaping and buffer yard requirements. So I can answer any questions that people may have. The applicants are here and uh, there are some neighbors here for this item as well. Do the applicants have any additional information that you'd like to add? Yeah. 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 Uh, my name is Steve Knaus, um, manager, um, whatever you want to call me. I manage that plant for our family company. Um, Steve did a very good job explaining pretty much everything. I think uh, one of his questions was, what is our timetable on that? Um, timetable, I talked with uh, Balin today, and I also talked with... Uh, well, concrete stand up, tip up wall, and uh, they're on schedule for August 1st of this year. Um, everybody knows there's a shortage of our timetable. So we have a roofing company that does all our roofs and we have a roof on site, but we have no building, we have no permits. So. They were telling us it was gonna be November, December for roofing materials and we don't wanna put a roof on in November, December. Mm -hmm. So we went and already purchased all the roofing materials so that we would have a roof when this building gets up. Um, that's just a decision we made. Um, one, one thing we are doing is it started out to be a smaller project 
uh, 10,000 square foot building. And then we run into trouble or we ran into the issue that the power lines that are running underneath that building, we had to re relocate because we could not build over them. Talking with Alliant Energy, they came back and said that your transformer in your switch gearbox is outdated. We have no parts for it. If that blows up today, you've got no power because we got no way to fix you. So that made us re-look at it. And then we wanted to also, we wanted to take care of and manage our wastewater. So the infill between the buildings is where our main wastewater flows out of. We're putting a complete basement in there. We're gonna take our wastewater and run it through our waste treatment facility and bring it back to the city and the water is gonna be cleaned out. There's gonna be no fat, there's gonna be no solids in it. Our BODs are gonna be lowered. We're gonna bring the water or the wastewater we send you is gonna be clean. And that's what we're trying to do. We do not wanna be on the checklist of the bad guy in the city that he's cheese factory or butter plant is dumping fatty waste down your system. We don't want that. We wanna manage it before it gets to you. Um, so we decided we we're gonna do that in Phil. Well, then we looked at it. I was with Balin one day and I said, why don't we close this whole thing across here? It's gonna make such a nice building. And that's what we added another six, 7,000 square foot to it. So it started one building, then it went to two and then it went three. And Pretty soon now we got it how we'd like it. So um, if you have any questions for me, um, you can ask me. Um, I can tell you a little short story about uh, why we're putting this here facility up. Um, the byproduct for making butter, our main business is making butter. We make about 100,000 pounds of, of butter a day. The byproduct is buttermilk. So we're taking the buttermilk and running it through uh, reverse osmosis, it's an RO they call it. From there we're taking the water out of that, if you wanna call it cow milk, you're taking the water out of the cow milk and we're using that for our washing, all the equipment at night. So we're saving on the city water that we need and at the end of the day that water goes through and we clean it up and we send it back to you. We're taking the solids from the butter milk, which is we re-inject that back into milk. And we've been working on this for about a year now, and we came up with a formula to make cheese back out of that product. So we're taking that, we're gonna make cheese out of that product and get all them solids that we want out because solids make us money and money makes us more money. So <laughs> we want them solids to put back into the cheese. And we're gonna sell the solids to other cheese processing, American cheese processing companies. And we're taking the byproduct from making cheese, which is whey, and we're gonna take the water out of that again, and the solids from that get sold to another company that uses it for animal calf feed, it gets dried. So at the end of the day, there isn't nothing leaving the city that doesn't get sold except the water, that clean water I'm giving you back. So. Uh, we know that wastewater is an issue and we wanna, we wanna solve it before we have any more problems with it. So we invested a lot of money in our waste treatment plant. Waste treatment plant is sitting here ready to get installed. We don't have a building yet, but we'll get there. Chad? So, so this is not related to this project, but the last time you were before us, you talked about adding a line for soft butter that yep. could be put in containers and sold on the shelf. And yep. is that project moving forward? That project is moving forward. They're, they're fine tuning right now. We were waiting for some equipment for our butter churn that we installed. Um, was supposed to be up and running last July. We had holdups for uh, computer screen, touch screen for the Allen Bradley products. So that product two weeks ago was our first run on it. Our butter churn was up and running. Um, we, we have to make a few changes on that. But yes, we did run that product and we know we can do it. So, but that's our second line. That's gonna add, once that line gets up and running, that's gonna add another roughly 35, 40,000 pounds a day of butter to the operation. Well, by adding butter, we add more buttermilk, 
we had more cheese, we, everything. So before we would move on to really expanding that plant and getting it up to the 300,000 pounds a day of butter that we want out of that plant, we wanted to get all the solids out of there and we wanted the cheese plant running. So at the end of the day, there's no extra cost. I'm not sending anything bad down the city drain that I'm gonna get charged for. So. All right, uh, Jerry. Thank you. A couple of questions for you, Chad, if you could pull up the uh, overhead uh, view of the property. With the uh, truck scale, what kind of timeline do you have for trucks to come in and out of there? I mean, what time of day would they be coming in and how long would they be on the scale or on the site before they're moving out? Normally, normally we try to do all our unloading during the day. We are with the increase of volume. We will be using some 9, 10 o'clock at night, mm -hmm. okay? Um, just for the, if I need to make 500,000 or 300,000 pounds of butter, I got to bring in 600,000 pounds of cream. Mm -hmm. Well, 600, that's 15 semi-loads and takes an hour and a half to unload a load. So we, we are going to try to do all our, you know, truck scaling, bringing trucks in, in daylight hours. But there will be times that we will be doing weekends and nights. Okay. A okay. second question, with the off-site parking. Jerry, uh, oh, you, I'm just, sorry. you want Chad to respond? D oh, just a second. So, but can you talk about the fact, uh, how many of the houses to the north of that scale do you already own? We bought nine of them houses north already. For the, for the reason for expansions, years down now, okay? We don't want to stop at that point. We want to do another expansion in the next three years, two to three years. We want to continue going north. So there's nine of them houses from, uh, if you want to go all the way to the dead end on St. Clair, all the way to 17th Street, and then the corner of 17th and St. Clair, we bought that large one on the corner there. Do you there. own all the houses between 16th and 17th on St. Clair? We own everything but two, three of them right now. Okay. We're negotiations with two of them, okay. okay? So our goal is to purchase that all the way up to the alley and, and make that, but we already purchased nine of them homes and I think we raised five of them. We have three more to raise or there's, yeah, we raised a few homes. So my point on that was that they just where those where that truck scale thing is, there's you know they own a lot of the properties to the north of that, and their goal right. is to have more of them. So there should be minimal, little less impact on those people that are just fronting that scale. Gotcha. Right. And the second question I had, thank you, Chad, uh, was the offsite parking. Did you work with the neighbor on the fence and the idea of the fence and where it's going to be and how high and everything, we, or did you just come up with that on your own? We or? came up we, with city staff. We came up and the staff said, we recommend you putting a fence here, and we thought that would be a great idea. We can work with the neighbors. I can have Balin work with them. I'd gladly work with them. Tell me what they want, and I'll, I'll build it. Okay. Great. That, that little fence is nothing to what we're spending on the property. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Brian? Yeah, I have a question. With those 27 parking spots you have on site, is that pretty much going to support your staff that, that works at this factory? I'm sorry. I'm I said, with, the, with the 27 parking spots we have, yes. that's, that's going to support your staff. So really the, the on-street parking is going to be minimal, correct? Minimum. Yeah. Yes. Okay. On-street parking will be minimum. Yeah. Yep. I'm just thinking that's maybe some of the questions that neighbors might have possibly, so, okay. Additional questions from commission members? Steve, any? Uh, no, I believe uh, one of the neighbors is here that lives next to the parking lot. Okay. Any... And there's other neighbors here as well if they have any questions. Additional comments from the public? Any input, questions, comments, concerns? Could you please stack up to the microphone? Yeah. And then just name and address would be helpful. Tony Rosick, 1520 St. Clair. Sounds like he's taken out the parking lot that the semis park in, so where are they going to be all on the road? I can answer. Uh, for everybody's information, you understand that the building across the street um, on 17th uh, used to be the transportation, the trucking company. We are in negotiations of buying that property. So all that trucking will get parked over there. 
Okay. So they're no longer, they, uh, two weeks ago they moved out of there. Uh, we're in a negotiation with that. Um, they've got some issues that they have to work through on that property. Because uh, with, the, with the Dean's Foods foreclosure and everything, they inherited it. They didn't want it. They were told they had to take it with the judge. So now they, they have some problems they have to work through. So that is our plan to park everything over there. Um, right now, we have only tankers that are on the east end of the building are full tankers. So our plan is to get them unloaded, get them over onto the west side, get them parked in the parking lot. Yeah. We, we know that they won't be there no more. We're, we've got places for them. Okay. Additional they won't be parked on the street. Okay. <laughs> Additional thoughts, comments from the public? No. All right. Additional comment? You guys good? Everyone good? Okay. All right. Motions, comments? I'll make from a motion to approve along with the staff recommendation. Second. Motion second. Final deliberations? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposition? Yeah. Share yes. votes yeah. aye. That is approved. All right, we've exhausted the agenda. April 26th, next meeting. We, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Aye. Motion second. All those in favor of adjourning, please state aye. Aye. Any opposition? We are adjourned at 426. Thank you, everybody. Aye. Thanks. Thank you.